Hey there, Tilted Barners. It's March 24th and the weather's pretty nice. So we're gonna spend some time today working on putting back some fence that the cattle kind of roughed up a little bit, that the pigs have roughed up, and get ready to put the pigs out on pasture. And with that comes fixing fence because those little buggers are hard on fence. First off, I'd like to apologize for the wind um, in typical Tilted Barn fashion. It's just plain windy out, so my apologies. One of the things we're going to do is, uh, I've got a bunch of old fence back here, and it's just pieces and parts from stuff that we've used and, and stuff that was left over from past fencing installs. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pick through this stuff and get some sections and start putting that up where I've got some bad spots. So that's, uh, that's the plan. Well, if you follow us on social media at all, you remember that last year we had an issue with the pigs getting out. And it was when they were pretty small, it was early spring. And what happened was, and I'll show you down here in this corner, the pigs were small enough that they were able to get their backs up underneath this electric wire. And these, this is a hot, or, um, this right here is a cattle panel and the cattle panel has bigger openings than a hog panel. The pigs could see through this opening and they wanted to go see what was on the other side. Well, when they got in, they got their, and this is off now, <clears throat> but they went in, this hit their back, they thought they could fit through this hole and they ended up pulling this whole section of fence <coughs> right away from this, this big post um, just folded this thing up like a toothpick or uh, like, like a paper clip. I mean, flipped this thing right up like it wasn't even there. And then they took off, they took off all the way down this fence line. Now, luckily, we had some neighbors and we are forever uh, thankful that we have them, but they were actually able to, uh, I don't know if you want to call it hog tie, is that a thing? Um, but they caught them and were able to. To catch them and, and tie them up and <laughs> it was pretty crazy um, so what we want to do today is I'm gonna take some of those other uh, yes I know buddy I see you yes yep we're friends so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put some more um, panels into here where we've got the bigger openings and uh, just kind of close it up a little bit so that the pigs are a little less likely to try and pop through. Um, you can see the cattle, they love playing with the dog. Okay, so we've got the other panel temporarily set in place, and you can see the difference we've got. You know, I've just, my goal here is just to close this opening up so that the pigs can't see through it and think that they can pop through onto the other side. So now what we'll do is we'll go get some fence wire and tie this fence up to the other fence and to the post and secure it in place so that uh, so it's ready to go.
All right, we've got this panel in. Now we're gonna keep working our way down. All right, so we gotta get these insulators out of the way. Make room for the fence. Some of you might be asking yourself, well, why didn't you just put in hog panels in the first place instead of the cattle panels? And that's a good question, and here's why. So the cattle panels, you can see, they're tall. They're way up here. Now, this, this is a cutout section, just a section that's cut out from a hog panel and you can see it's a lot shorter and when you look over here so here's a section of hog panel from an old piece of fence that we had and you can see this is just as high as it goes but then you look over here and you've got the cattle panel and this little tops popped off but uh, the cattle panel is just a lot higher and the problem we've got is that the cattle or the hog panels are so short that the cattle can actually step over top of them so it's not common um, I have had them do it in the winter where we've had snow piles and snow drifts and they've actually just with the snowpack walked right over the top of them you know one of the things I want to point out is um, this time of year if you look behind me you can see the pasture that the cattle have been in all winter and it looks pretty beat up and it's gonna um, it's muddy the ground is wet um, I don't want them out on the pasture uh, because what they're gonna do is they're gonna tear it up and make it look like this so we're feeding out the round bales and unfortunately this is what it's gonna look like until I can get them out and once the pasture starts growing and I can get them out on pasture and they can start grazing and we do our rotational grazing so for any of you out there who are looking out there and going, oh man, that really looks rough. Yeah, it is, but the cattle are healthy. Um, and what will happen is once we get the cattle out on pasture and we're doing the rotational grazing, this whole paddock is gonna get a break. And it'll get a break for most of the summer so that it'll get a chance to regrow, to regenerate, um, and just, you know, just take care of itself and, and really just kind of heal itself so that's uh that's the situation with the pasture again here in Michigan that's pretty much normal okay we've got this whole stretch here done and now we're gonna work on this stretch right behind me